We have serious cost of living issues in this constituency. We have parents who can't afford to buy uniforms and school bags for their children. We have real issues down here at Oinatha. So we don't understand the high flying approach of the Barbers Day Party politicians. We have pensioners who cannot survive on the pension they get, who can't pay the utilities, the utilities and who can't buy food at the same time. And we have responded, we have responded with enlightened policies. Only days ago, Owen Arthur cursed us for saying that we are going to return to a system of price controls. He abused our parliamentarians for daring to say we want to control prices. Now he's getting up on TV saying that, oh, I am going to look at price control again. Just a little too late, Owen. A little too late. He can't fool us all the time. He can't fool us all the time. And I know that he will not fool you. I want to challenge, and we have said it, you know. Although we're not in government, we have said, and I heard it on a platform, we will make sure that we will provide immediate solutions to the cost of living. We will remove, remove the back on utilities, and we will enlarge the basket of items exempted from VAT. That is what we will do. We're not messing around. We know the cost of living is a problem, and we will do something about it. And I want to challenge Owen Arthur tonight, and all the members of his party, including the one that I will not call his name, who is supposed to represent you. I want to challenge them because this is the season of stealing Democratic Labour Party policies. I want to challenge them tonight. I don't think our leader will get vets if they implement the policies that we have talked about to alleviate the cost of living problems that you have. Implement them. Do it tomorrow. Go on TV that you monopolize because all of a sudden um, the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation is the public relations arm of the Barbados Labour Party. And I feel it's time we go up there and, and march and use placards and tell CBC, tell the nation that we are living in a democratic country. It's utter foolishness. Nonsense. Nonsense. We have two community centers in this constituency. And what do we have? We have one in Ware Hall and we have one in Gold Hill. Yet still the residents of this constituency can't use it. They have, I'm told they have to pay money to use the Aberdeen Center. And, and would you believe it? In their 1999 manifesto, page 11 to the exact, exactly 14 years ago, they promised that all communities will have paved roads and access to recreational facilities and community centers. Uh, in their 1999 manifesto and in their entire 64 pages of their 2003 manifesto which carries only a photograph of Owen Arthur on its, on its face, not a single word about community development or community centers, not one word. And under my proposed community development program, the current complaint that the resource center at Bear Hall needs to be made accessible to all will not exist. Both the center and the Aberdeen community center are underutilized and not easily accessible to residents. And tonight, I am calling on the government to put an end to the red tape and open the doors to you, to these community centers. I want to get to the old supermarket building behind me. They have promised to do a lot in relation to this building. They have promised to refurbish it, to turn it into all kinds of things, and nothing has happened. Tonight I want to share with you my plan for this building. It is my intention. No, no, they have to know. They can't implement it. They can't implement it. It is, it is my intention to transform this building behind us for the benefit of you, the constituents of this area. I want to make sure that it has the most modern facilities and that we are going to transform the basement to ensure that the Silver Hill netball team that has to play in, in the open elements and change in the open elements that they have facilities to change. And we, 
And I know that this government will support a computer center in this building. And we are not going to re redesign it to, to leave out the church that currently unit uses it. The church will still be able to use it. We want to ensure that you benefit from the hard earned dollars that is being spent and being given away in this country. My vision for this center is that it will be part of a redeveloped Silver Hill. And we will make sure that the improvements and the amenities are put in place. Do you know that the Aberdeen Center, that the city MP could not even get the business people, the persons who want to own the business to own any of those areas downstairs? All of them went and were taken by Anthony Wood, who put all his constituents down there. And Elsha walked about complaining and grumbling that he couldn't get any done. He, could you believe the man though? Today our children in many districts across this constituency have nowhere to play and must face the danger of exposure to traffic. And this is not a new issue, it has been raised over and over again. They have received no assistance. We have one isolated play park in this constituency. You will see it on the screen tonight. And it has been left derelict. I envision that housing developments across this constituency will have recreational facilities for residents, particularly our children and our senior citizens. And coming to the area of sports, for 12 years, the open field at Canevale was promised as a playing field for sports. Today, nothing has happened. Under the Democratic Labour Party government, we will do something about that. The footballers who are members of the Pride of God Hill must be very shamed because their president failed to activate that project. I am anxious tonight to establish constituency sports, a constituency sports committee comprised of representatives of all sporting groups to sit and plan for the development of sports. And I'm convinced we can link, link sports to community development and achieve wonders in this constituency. I want to bring on board groups such as the Pride of God Hill Sports Group who can, with me, broaden the scope of development in this constituency. Tonight, whether you are in Silver Hill or elsewhere, we face the toughest test ever in our history since El Barra defied the odds and the threats and attacks of the Barbados Labour Party and led us into nationhood. And we must never forget that while the Barbados Labour Party pretends today to celebrate independence because it has no choice, they did not want independence. They never wanted it. It is all cheap political propaganda, part of the glitz and glamour that they are relishing. The ability of this team under David Thompson, the same way that they attack El Barro, they're attacking David Thompson and this team, saying that we don't know what to do. They said the same thing about El Barro, and history has proven them wrong, and we will prove them wrong again. Our boast of being an educated and intelligent people will be tested at the upcoming general election. The world is watching Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, Bahamas that have determined their destiny are looking to see what Barbados will do. Don't ever forget it. St. Lucia as well. Countries such as Canada, United Kingdom, they are looking to see what we will do. Whether we will stand up to this uncaring government. Your vote for me and the Democratic Labour Party is more crucial today than at any other time in our history. And I say to you tonight that if you refuse to vote, you, in effect, would have refused to act while your country is being run over by the Barbados Labour Party government. I want to thank you tonight. I remain here for you 
and I enjoy all the accolades that have been showered on me tonight. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good night.